Greetings fellow tank commanders, in this video I'm going to be showing you a game that I played in the Fortress Ferdinand. This is a tier 8 German premium tank destroyer with regular matchmaking, and I will also be giving my first impression of this tank. The game I'm playing is an encounter battle on Ruinberg Winter with tier 9 as the top tier and one artillery on each team. For this game my tank is equipped with a gun rammer, improved ventilation, and an enhanced gun laying drive and I am using a German crew which has 16 crew skills and perks. Off the start here I'm heading to a defensive position to overwatch the encounter base. I've tried quite a few strategies so far with the Fortress Ferdinand, but so far it doesn't seem very flexible and needs to be played quite passively. I did use the Tech Tree variant of this tank, but that was a long time ago and so I'm kind of relearning the game style here. Alright, so let's go over some of the basic characteristics of the Fortress. It's got mediocre mobility overall and really suffers in the horsepower to weight ratio. It's not unbearable and considering how passively you're going to be using this tank, it's not going to be overly noticeable. Now regarding the fortress's armor, it does advertise as being quite thick for a tier 8 tank destroyer, but the armor is extremely flat, so you're not going to be bouncing shots in as many situations as you think. Most of the shots that'll bounce come from lower tier tanks. But don't really expect too much more when you're fighting high pen tank destroyers or really anything above tier 8 because most of them will be able to go through your superstructure with premium rounds easily. So try to make good use of it by angling it whenever you can because you still will be able to bounce a few shots but try not to base your whole strategy around it. Two things that you don't really get to see in this game but that can help increase your tank survivability are using cover to hide the bottom plate and sometimes taking advantage of ridge lines which can be difficult because it is a rear mounted tank destroyer. The fortress also has a decent side to side gun arc which means that you don't have to reposition too often when you're sniping. Now what you do want to base your strategy around is its reliable 10.5 centimeter cannon. It has 320 alpha damage per shot with a base reload of 8.19 seconds which I have gotten down to 6.49. It's got a good aim time of 1.7 and 0.33 accuracy which is great but remember that most of the time you're fighting at well over 300 meters so that high accuracy is necessary. Overall the gun is pretty much the same as the low which is the tier 8 German premium heavy tank with the exceptions that the fortress has a faster aim time and a better rate of fire which you would expect from a tank destroyer. I have no complaints on the reliability of the gun but I am thinking that that reload could be a little better to help make it a little more of a competitive tank. Now in terms of view range it's a little on the low side at 370. If that's a concern you can always sub out the enhanced gun laying drive for binoculars and it's got pretty good camouflage. The concealment value is 41, and if you want a comparison, the Scorpion G is 36. So it's got decent camouflage for an armored tank destroyer, but it's definitely not one of those invisible tanks like the E25 or the Borsig. The Fortress Ferdinand has a good amount of hit points at 1500. It's higher than a lot of the other tier 8 tank destroyers, which are about 1100 or 1200. I think the question that most people are going to be asking is how does the Fortress Ferdinand compare to the Tech Tree variant? The Fortress Ferdinand gets a 10.5 centimeter cannon, which does an average of 320 damage. The Tech Tree variant uses a 12.8 centimeter cannon, which does an average of 490 damage. So the Fortress gets the appropriate accuracy and aim time improvements for having a smaller caliber. What's disappointing to me about the stack comparison for these guns is that the Tech Tree variant has a higher damage per minute. It's not by much, only 171 DPM difference. But when the 12.8 centimeter is able to hit for 170 more damage, which makes it far better at trading shots, which is important when you're fighting the higher tier enemies, then I would really like my smaller caliber Ferdinand to have that damage per minute advantage. Because to me right now, that gun doesn't seem to have a main strength to it. It doesn't have to be much, but I think it should be enough that players can say I use the Fortress Ferdinand because it has a better damage per minute than the Tech Tree variant, even though it doesn't have as high of alpha damage. In terms of a mobility comparison, the Tech Tree variant gets 140 more horsepower and 1 degree per second more of hull traverse, but they have the same top speed. That horsepower difference is quite considerable when you're trying to climb up hills, but really this tank isn't known for its mobility anyways, so it's just making the game style more extreme. And to balance it out, the Fortress Ferdinand gets a better concealment value, which is 41, compared to the Tech Tree variant's 32. So it doesn't make it a different tank or anything, but it's an interesting trade-off. Besides those two things, the tanks are identical, but I feel at the moment that the Tech Tree variant does have an advantage. 
Now let's give a quick look at the tactical overview for this game. It was an encounter battle and I just overwatched the base the whole time, trying to be the defensive fortress for the base. So many of my teammates went to the city and got destroyed. One option is we could have made a push on the base and tried to push the enemies that were there off since they were just Tiger Tank and Hellcat. But my teammates really didn't take an aggressive initiative towards that. And so far being a line breaker with the fortress hasn't worked out very well for me. But we were able to see a decent showcase of the Fortress Ferdinand's gun performance during passive play. Now let's check the post game stats and see how I did. For this game I managed to earn 102,000 silver without any multipliers, remembering that I did use a premium consumable and I fired a single premium round at the end. I also earned 2,416 experience. In this game I dealt 4,403 damage and destroyed 4 enemies while blocking 480 damage. This earned me high caliber and a mastery badge ace tanker. I placed at the top of my team earning a base XP of 935. I managed to hit 19 of my 23 shots and penetrate 14 of those. Overall a decent performance and earnings for a defeat. In terms of crew and module damage, I damaged the fuel tank in the T-43 and destroyed the ammo rack in the FV-201A45. The Fortress Ferdinand has a 15% XP bonus and a 55% silver bonus. That's pretty standard for a tier 8 premium, so it's not going to be a tank that specializes in earning silver or training crews but it has those nice premium tank benefits. Now I have noticed that running the large kits and the chocolate in every game takes a pretty big toll on the silver earning potential, but you're still going to be making a decent profit. So overall my first impression of this tank is that it isn't really tactically flexible. It has some decent surviving capabilities with the combination of the armor and camouflage. The gun performs quite nicely, but I still do think it is a little lacking compared to the tech tree variant. Now this is just my first impression so my opinion might change over time as I use other tanks to fight against these in battle. This tank is really only going to be enjoyable for passive players who are looking for a tank that's got some good sniping capabilities and maybe you're also just missing that Ferdinand game style from when you went through the tech tree. I know I missed it. I don't think this is a must have in your garage but I still think quite a few players are going to get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Now for a little bit of a side topic I want to talk about where the Fortress Ferdinand came from. It's from World of Tanks second comic series, which is actually a prequel to the first. They went all Star Wars backwards on us there. If you haven't read them yet, I'll leave a link in my description below that'll take you to a review that I did for the first one. Now based on the tanks that the Fortress Ferdinand is going to be fighting and alongside in the comic series, I think it would have been more appropriate for it to be a tier 7, with an obvious adjustment to the stats to accommodate a lower tier. Because in the story it fights alongside panthers and tigers, not the cats, the tanks, which are tier 7s, and Kraft's panzer, which is one of the main tanks, is actually a tier 5 in this game. There's also Matildas and T-34s in the story, and both of those will probably end up as tier 5s as well. So I was really disappointed that the Fortress Ferdinand wouldn't get to fight in battle alongside all those other comic tanks. This isn't very important for someone who's just generally playing World of Tanks, but if you're a fan of the comics like I am, I'm sure you'll agree it would have been cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed that game with the Fortress Ferdinand and that my first impression was helpful. Stay tuned for more awesome World of Tanks videos.